Thank you for listening. This is the Wyoming Photographic Podcast. All things photography from the state of Wyoming, featuring Wyoming-based photographers, as well as photographers who travel from all over the world to photograph this wonderful state. I am your host, Jeff Footer, and we have an amazing show in store for you. Today we have Julia Cook, a wildlife photographer from Cody, Wyoming. Hello, Julia. Can you hear me okay? Yes, how are you? Good. How are you today? Doing good. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, Julia, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I live in Cody, and I grew up here in Cody, and, you know, close to Yellowstone about an hour, and always outside, always, you know, fishing, camping, everything like that growing up. So definitely have always loved the outdoors and, and nature. And for me, wildlife photography kind of came later, but it was just another way to kind of connect with the natural world here in Wyoming and enjoy our, our outdoors that we have here. So what does your daily routine look like as a photographer? <laughs> I'm not really a morning person. I wish that I was. <laughs> but in the spring, I'll, I'll get up and be in Yellowstone like before sunrise, um, just because that's the best time of year typically for wildlife photography. So I do make myself get out of bed then. But it kind of depends with the seasons. So like right now, middle of summer, it, it's kind of really hot and the wildlife isn't really active. So typically this time of year, I only go in in like the late evenings in Yellowstone and typically only maybe two or three times a week instead of every day. Um, but on the days that I do go to Yellowstone, you know, I load up my car and, and get everything that I need for a day and, and head up to Yellowstone. And typically I do just like a drive pass through um, some areas that's best for wildlife. And if I don't see anything, I then usually try to do like a short hike anytime that I'm in the park, you know, looking for other wildlife and, and trying to do different kinds of photography, maybe some landscape, stuff like that. So when did you get into photography and how did you learn it? Really, it was the beginning of COVID. Um, I just graduated this um, May from the University of Wyoming. So when COVID started, I was a freshman and everything switched to online. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, with all this free time now. So I just started going to Yellowstone um, when I, the days I didn't have online classes. And really, I've always been a creative person and I always like, you know, like creating art and stuff like that. So I, I picked a camera really just as a, you know, creative outlet during that time. And got back out in, in nature and really had more free time to get out and and try to start a new hobby. And I got hooked really, really quickly. Um, so all through that summer of 2020, I was in Yellowstone as often as I could. And then that fall semester, um, the University of Wyoming had moved back to being in person. And I just said, forget that. And I took all online classes again to be in Yellowstone and be out in the field and photographing as often as I could. So really I just learned through, you know, trial and error and being out practicing as often as I could and taking a lot of really bad photos at the start. But... So what's one question you absolutely hate being asked and why? I really don't like when people ask how much my camera setup costs. I don't know. It seems like a really personal question, but I get asked, you know, quite a lot. Um, but, you know, camera equipment is expensive, but I've only ever bought one piece new, like all my lenses and everything. I've all bought used to get it, you know, as cheap as I can. <laughs> I pretty much buy everything used. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, what's the best picture you've ever taken? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I think there's some photos that I really like just because of like the personal connection to that photo or like the story that I know behind it. But I don't really think that I'd consider some of those like my best photos. I think probably one of my best photos um, is a, a photo of a gray wolf with a raven flying directly over its head. And that actually was on my birthday up in Yellowstone two years ago. Oh, fun. And I'd been looking for wolves for a week and hadn't really seen anything. And finally, the last day that I was going to be there, um, there was a pack of wolves and they were kind of just sitting on the hillside and this raven flew directly over this wolf's head. And I got the shot where they were perfectly lined up. And so I think technically, like like technical wise, that that's probably my best photo and, and one that was definitely really difficult to get and that I never even really thought would be possible to get. So that one's probably up there. If you could go back and sit down with yourself when you first started photography and give yourself one piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? I think I'd say to pay attention to the backgrounds in photos. I think when I was starting out, especially with wildlife photography, when there's practically very little that you can control, you know, you can't walk out there to a bear and be like, can you pose, you know, like this and look this way. So there's really little that you can control, but the background is one of those things. Like just even a, a shift in perspective and taking three steps to your left can really clean up a background. So I have a lot of photos that I think would have been good photos or better photos when I was first starting out. If I'd looked at the background, like, you know, a lot where there's a distracting branch in the background or something like that. So now that's something that I really try to pay attention to yeah, and make sure that I get, you know, a good subject, but also a good background too. 
I can relate to that. And I think uh, pretty much everybody can, especially when they first started. Uh, yeah. That's definitely part of photography. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's so for what sure. kind of gear do you use? I shoot with a Canon R5. A Canon 300 2.8 and I, I really like that lens it's really sharp um I really wanted a 400 but they were they're just too hard to find and too expensive um but with the high resolution on the r5 I can crop in pretty far without really losing image quality so I think I get by with the the 300 with that range and then occasionally I'll use a 70 to 200 for like landscape um anything like that <laughs> Yeah, and I'd love to have some good lenses. I don't, <laughs> I really, I don't have any good telephoto lenses, I'll put it that way. I've got other lenses, but uh, nothing for wildlife, really. Um, not that it's not something I'd want to do, but I just haven't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so who is your favorite photographer, and uh, who who do you get your inspiration from? You know, I, I've been really lucky to meet a bunch of great photographers out in the field, and a lot of them have become friends. And when I was first starting out photography, I felt like most of the people in Yellowstone that do wildlife photography were all, you know, people that had either moved to Yellowstone or like kind of been in the same, you know, area and but had retired and then got into wildlife photography as like a hobby post-retirement. But I've met a lot of of younger photographers, too, that have, you know, that this is what they've just decided they want to do and they're going to do whatever they can to do that, which is kind of how I am now. But I've met a lot of great younger photographers that are, you know, it's it's easy to be competitive, to be like, you know, we're all working in the same industry, but they're all very, very supportive. And I get a lot of inspiration from them. So, you know, like Evan Watts, um, Brooke Bartleson, you know, Tanner Haver, like a bunch of of the young younger photographers and it's really great just seeing how we can all support each other without you know getting too competitive about it it's hard to point down just one person i yeah it is yeah i know how that goes i so would many great photographers i don't think i'd especially be able to you know here answer that <laughs> because yeah there are just so many um so what uh what places do you love to go around wyoming um other than yellowstone that to take pictures yeah i spend most of my time in yellowstone just because it's so close um But definitely also, you know, the Shoshone National Forest that connects Cody to Yellowstone. I spend a lot of time there, too. And it's funny. It's like you get out of Yellowstone and people think there's magically no wildlife anymore. So I can be photographing a bear in the National Forest and like nobody will stop because it's not Yellowstone. So they think there's no animals Right. anymore, which is crazy. But I, when I went to school down at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, I spent a lot of time up in the Snowy Range. And I love that area of the state as well. So kind of all over the place. You know, Wyoming's great for... natural beauty everywhere pretty much Oh, it absolutely is. Um, so what is the uh, best compliment you think you've gotten on a single photo? i think for me i've i have recently had someone say that you know I, I followed you on instagram i love your work i love your photos of grizzlies and it really inspired me to take a trip to yellowstone and i and i got to see a grizzly bear and to me that was like wow you know because i i do wildlife photography just because i love the wildlife and that's mostly the reason why i got started so for someone to say like just looking at your photos inspired me to want to see a grizzly bear that was that was like a great compliment for me So what is uh, what is your biggest photographic failure and how did you recover from that and how did you learn from that how did that make make you better I'm really not a very patient person. I've gotten better the last couple of years, but my biggest photographic failure wasn't really like in terms of like, you know, my settings were wrong or anything like that. It, it's usually always because I leave a wildlife sighting early and then miss something. So the war, the one that hurt the most was I was in um, the Tetons two years ago waiting for 399 to come out of hibernation with her four cubs. And I waited for like a week and I saw nothing. And I was like, I'm done. I'm over this. And so I, I left. And like an hour after I left, she came out with all four of her cubs. And so that was one that I was, you know, still kicking myself over, but it, it made me learn now that at whatever point that I'm like, you know, I'm ready to leave. I'll, I'll wait longer. And I, I'll, you know, set a different time and say, well, no, I'm not leaving until this time or, you know, whatever, until I'm, I'm convinced that truly nothing's going to happen. So that's, was definitely up there. I think that's that way for a lot of types of photography. I'm, I'm more of a um, more of a landscape photographer, and same way. Um, a lot of times I'll I'll leave because well oh, the light's just not right or the light's not gonna Yeah. be right, and then as soon as I leave everything changes, and that's just how it goes Yeah. sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, it's been really really good having you on the show. I hope that Yeah, thank you. hope that uh, everybody got something out of that and. I'd love to have you back at some point if you'd be willing.
Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. So, um, where can people, where can listeners find your contact information, your, um, see your pictures and. Yeah. So I, I post most frequently on, on Instagram and that's, uh, at julia.littlelightningnature, but I also have a website and that's littlelightningnature.com. And, and I update, you know, put prints up there and have just some more general information about myself on my website as well. And, and prints for sale as well. So, all right. Well, thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Yeah. And thanks for having me on. Hopefully we'll do this again soon. Yeah, absolutely. That was Julia Cook, wildlife photographer from Cody, Wyoming, and this has been the Wyoming Photographic Podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll catch you next time.